स्कैन ओवर फंक्शन स्कैन फाइल ओवर सर We were discussing about the infant statement. I told you infant statement identifies the data. It identifies mainstream data or text file data. Not only that one, infant statement along with input statement, along with the input statement, it reads data values, data values into variables. And depends upon the requirement in the infer statement. We use the different types of infer statement options. If we have a comma as a delimiter, if the data contains singular double quotations, if you have a two consecutive special characters, if you want to treat as an a missing value, we use the DSD option. And then we have seen if you have any special character has a delimiter. If you have any special character as a delimiter. We are going to use DLM is equal to the special character as an option. And then we have seen DLM STR is equal to whatever the string that we have, we can add the DLM STR is equal to string. But along with that, we should write a DLM S OPT is equal to ignore the case. And then no. we have seen, you know, by default, we, we have seen the first two base is equal to by default, we have in a one, and you can add any number. Sir, then we have seen screen. Yes, can't see my screen. No, sir. Same problem for everybody. It's visible, sir. No, sir. It's working fine. Many, many persons are there in the lobby. Actually, it's coming on our screen. It's continuously. Answer. Everybody could able to see my screen now. Yes, sir. 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 And then we have seen OBS is equal to option by default. We have a max, but you can specify any number. But whatever the number that you specified, so it is going to stop processing at that number. And then I told you by default, we are going to have an option called flower. What this flower option can do when this is option is on by default. If you do have a missing value for any variable, it will jump into the next line to get the value. And then we have seen miss our option. If you want to stop the flower option, we use the miss our option. And then if you have a missing value, if you want to stop the program, now we are going to use a stop our option. And then finally, we have seen scan over option. Scan over option is going to scan a particular, each, it is going to scan each and every record for a particular characteristic. And after that, whatever the string that you specified within the quotations, after at the red, at the red symbol in the input statement, now whatever the value that we have, after that particular character string, that value will come into this, that variable. So these are the options that we have seen in the infant state. Okay. In the today's class, we are going to discuss about uh, some in-file statement. Okay, in-file statement automatic variables. What are the automatic variables that we have? We'll see that one. Now, first of all, on my desktop, I have an, a SAS folder. In the SAS folder, I have SAS data folder. In the SAS data folder, 
I have a day moment text file. I want to create a data set. So from this text file, I'm getting the path. Copy as path. Now, you know how to write the program, right? Now I want to create a data set data. I'm writing a data set name, say for example, EMP semicolon. Then I'm writing the in file statement path of the text file semicolon. Then I'm going to specify input statement. I want to have EMP ID, then name character available dollar symbol, then is six character available dollar symbol. Then I want to have a salary final location character variable dollar symbol semicolon. Now write the run statement. You know what? If I execute this program, yes, in the work library, we are going to have EMP data set and that data set is going to have, you know, six variables and 23 observations. But you know that one. That is fine. But in today's class, you know what I'm going to do. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not interested in this data set. Yes, we will get the data set. Yes, so we are going to get the data set. That is fine. But in today's class, what I'm going to do, I'm going to discuss about uh, some in file statement options. Sir, so, yes. Sir, we have, why didn't you use proc input? For which one? For getting the uh, copy as path, the, the uh, file from outside location that we got. It. The data is not in a manner. We do not have a variable names. When we can use a proc import processor, if you want to use a proc import processor in the text file, we should have a variable names. Understand? Yes, sir. So since we do not have a text file, since we do not have a variable names, I cannot use. Of course, we can use, but it's in a, that is a special case. But if whenever we do not have variable names, always better to use proc but better to use a data step understand i will show you one more thing say for yes, example if, if your data is like this one can you see what we have here along with the variable names along, along with the data variable names then we have variable names so we can use a proc input processor okay yes now, what I'm going to do in the in file statement, since I'm creating a data set from text file, I had given the path of the text file. And after that, before the semicolon, now I'm going to write. Now I'm going to write an option called end is equal to. In which statement I'm writing this end is equal to option? In file. And in file statement, you know, end is equal to after is equal to symbol, you can write any variable name. After is equal to symbol, you should write a variable name. I am writing my variable name as say for example e. So now end is equal to creates an automatic variable called e. What is this automatic variable? You know, what do you mean by automatic variable? An automatic variable is a variable that you cannot see in the data set that remains present in the back end. That is going to be remains present in the back end. You cannot see that variable. You cannot see that variable in the data set. You cannot see that variable in the data set. Now, what is this automatic variable? But if you can. If you cannot see in the data set, then where we can see? You can see in the log window. If you want to see the variable in the log window, how we can see this in the log window? You can see in the log window. How to see in the log window? 
you know if you want to see any variable in the log window we are going to write a statement called put statement we'll discuss about this put statement in future why we did the put statement in the put statement generally we can write any variable name now whatever the variable name that you specified in the put statement now this variable values will appear will print in the log window understand this one now see i'm selecting this program and i'm executing this program now okay we are getting the data set that is fine now if i go to that log window now can you see in the log window now i can see that e variable values now can you see what are the values that we have in the e variable we have 22 zeros and then finally we have a one one in the last we have a value one and what is this you know this end is equal to option creates an automatic variable since it is an automatic variable you cannot see this variable values in the data set if you want you can see that variable you can see that variable in the log window but if you want to see that in the log window what we should write we should write that variable in the put statement i will tell you later what is the back end what are the automatic variables we'll discuss about that one in future now this end is equal to variable is going to have two types of values either 0 or 1 it is going to be 0 for all the observations except for the last observation for all the observation the value will be 0 but in the last for the last observation the value will be 1 understand this one end is it creates oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. end is equal to option creates an automatic variable since it is an automatic variable you cannot see this variable values in the data set that remains present in the back end but if you want to see this variable values we can see this variable values in the log window if you want to see it in the log window you should write that variable in the put statement and what are what are the values that we can see in this variable in this variable we can see two types of values either 0 or 1 when it is going to be 0 it is going to be 0 for all the observations except for the last observation for the last observation the value would be 1 understand this one now what are the use of this one in the real time there are going to be certain scenarios where i want to have only the last observation of the data set out of 23 i want to have only the last observation now if you want to have only the last observation you know then what we are going to do we are going to have in future a condition like this one if e is equal to one e is equal to one now if i select this program and execute this program now can you tell me for which observation e is equal to one 23rd observation the 23rd observation now in the data set now we are going to have only the 23rd observation so now by using this end is equal to variable now i can filter the data i can have only the last observation in some scenarios i want to have all the observations except the last observation if you want to have all the observations except the last observation now what i'm going to do i am going to specify e is equal to zero so which observation satisfy this condition all 22 observations. 23, the first 22 observations satisfy this condition now in the data set you will have the first 22 observations understand this one now it depends upon a requirement by using by using end is equal to variable now we can choose all the observations except the last observation or you can choose only the last observation understand this one sir does uh, zero and one specify something sir no nothing so it is going to be zero for all observations that's it and it is going to be one for the last observation understand now here you know it that oh, variable name is only e you can any variable name and is equal to for it x what will happen now with the name of x a variable will be get created so 
put you should write x variable now x variable will show you put statement is going to say you show you what are the values that we have in the x variable in the log window yes we are going to have 22 zeros and for the last observation we are going to have an f1 understand this one this is a how we are going to use it and is equal to sir if and, you need observations means but then what what do you want to have if you need in in between observations like i need 17th observation we have already seen if you want you can use what are the options that we can use for that one what is the observation that you want to have yeah 17 so yes. first base is equal to 7 O base is equal to 7. 7. Okay, sir. Thank you. 17. Now you're going to get only 17th observation. In future, we are going to have so many other methods, different methods. We can use any one method if you want to select any particular observation. And one of the method is first O base and O base. Clear, everybody? Yes, sir. Now. And after the end is equal to the next option that we have is file name is equal to option. Now again, I am writing the same program. Now, if I execute this program, can you tell me what is the data set we are going to have now in the work library? What is the data set we will create now? Seventeenth observation. Sir. This one. If I execute this program, what is the data set we are going to have in the work library? EMP. 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 Okay, if I execute this program, yes, I'm going to have EMP data set, which is going to have a 23 observations and six variables. So that is fine. Now in the in file statement, you know what I'm going to do? Now I'm going to use one more option called file name is equal to. Now after the is equal to also, you know what you should write? You should write any or any variable name. You can write any name, but whatever the name that you have written here with that name, it will create an automatic variable. Again, what is what is an automatic variable? An automatic variable has been a automatically created that remains present in the back end. You cannot see that variable in the data set. But if you want to see this automatic variable, where we can see now, we can see it in log window. But if you want to see it in the log window, what is the statement you should write? What is the statement you should write? We should write put statement. Put, put statement. In the put statement, whichever variable, variable values you want to see in the log window, you should write that variable name. Put FL. Now I am selecting this program and I am executing this program. Yes, we are going to have EMP data set. That is fine. We will get six variables and 23 observations. That is fine. But if you go to the log window, in the log window, these are the values I am going to have. What is this value? It will show you from all the 23 records from which location we are getting. Now, can you tell me from where I'm creating this EMP data set? I'm creating this EMP data set from this text file. Now, this file name is equal to whatever the variable name I have written. Now, this variable will have all the records from where we are getting the information. It is going to have the location of all the 23 records. Now, do you know where I'm getting this data? I'm getting the data from my desktop. On my desktop, I have a SAS folder. In the SAS folder, I have a SAS data folder. In the SAS data folder, I'm getting from this text file. But in that, in the in the log window, now can you see what I can see now? I can see only C drive colon users because by default whatever the variable name i'm creating here fl that length of that variable by default is only eight characters since the length of the variable is only eight characters we do not have enough length that's why it is not showing the complete path understand now if you want to get the complete path then what we should do you need to increase the length of this automatic variable how to increase length of a variable in future we will discuss about that one if you want to increase the length of any character variable we use a statement called length statement in today's class just i'm writing the length statement we'll discuss about the statement in depth in in, in future classes for which variable i want to increase the length 
what is the variable like i am creating here f1 fn 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 i want to increase the length of that variable now i am writing length variable name fn then since is a character variable you should write a dollar symbol now how much length you want to have i want to have length maybe 200 characters now i am writing 200 semicolon so the length of this fl variable will be increased from 2 to 200 sorry from 8 to 200 now see since we have enough length in the log window it is going to print the complete path of you know each and every record now uh, we are getting this all the 23 records from the c drive users Srinivas, and then desktop on the desktop i have a sas folder in that i have a sas data folder in the sas data folder this is the text file i'm having from this text file i'm getting the data understand this one if you want to see that from where we are getting the data each and every record now what is the option that we can write in the file in the in file statement in the in file statement we can write an option called file name is equal to a variable name with this name it will create an automatic variable since is an automatic variable it will be remains present only in the back end if you want to see that variable value so we should write that variable in the put statement so now it will print the values in the log window since it has got only length 8 it cannot show you the complete path if you want to see the complete path you should increase the length of the variable so if you increase the length of the variable now in the log window it will print the complete path of each and every one each and every record from where we are getting the data it is not going to have any real-time usage but as a SAS programmer it will give you an idea from where we are getting the data Understand this one? Clear everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the next option in the infile statement we have is called as a you know, column is equal to. Now, this is also creates an automatic variable. Now, see, this time I am create I am writing the same program again, but I do not want to have a statement and all. Simply in the in file statement this time i am writing an option called column is equal to okay column is equal to any macro any any sorry automatic variable any name of the variable so whatever the name that we have given with this name now it will create an automatic variable now i am writing column is equal to clm so now it will create an automatic variable called clm so since is an automatic variable you cannot see that variable values in the log in the any in the data set but if you want you can see in the log window but if you want to see in the log window what is the statement we should write it we should write a statement called put. in the put statement now i'm writing the variable name now if i execute this program now the clm automatic variable values will print in the log window what values it is going to have now see first of all i'm executing this program now after that uh, i'm going to that log window in the log window now these are the values you can see what are these values? first value 29 28 27 30 31 and what are these values simple now see i'm going to the text file this is the text file from where i created the emp data set from here i'm creating a emp data set now can you see you know that uh, 101 is go to went into like you know emp id Usha has been gone into name, 29 into age, female into sex, 34,000 into salary, and HVD into which variable? Location. After reading HVD into location, now can you see, here you can see my input pointer. In the back end, this is called input pointer. Something is blinking. Can you see this one? Now, when I have an input pointer after the HVD, now can you see what is the column number I have here at the down? Now, can you see here the column number 29 so that is the value we are getting so that means uh, the input pointer is standing at the 29th column after reading the entire first record so can you see here we have a 29 now after reading the second record where i have input pointer can you see in the down here we have input pointer can you see what the column number i have 28 so that is the 28 i'm getting here 
So after reading each and every record, where the input pointer is standing at the end of the record. Now can you see my input pointer is blinking here? When it's blinking, can you see what the column number I have here? 27. Can you see that down? 27. So that means uh, the last column of in the third record is 27. So column is equal to will give you the last column number of, of each and every input record. So by seeing this value, you can understand you know, what the last column of each and every record. Again, you may not have a real time. Is a as a SaaS programmer, you can understand from where we are getting this data. Understand this one? Is this clear? No. Yes, sir. So, the column is equal to, yes, this time I'm using one more option called, you know, length is equal to. Now, I am executing the same program. You know what? If I execute this program, definitely I'm going to get a data set. That is fine. But now, here I'm letting an option called length is equal to. Length is equal to. I'm creating a variable called, say, for example, LTH. Now, length is equal to creates an automatic variable. Since it's an automatic variable, this variable remains present in the backend. Now, if you want to see that variable, you can see in the log window. But if you want to see that in the log window, where we should write that variable now? Where we should write that variable? You should write that variable in the push statement. Now, if you write that variable in the push statement, if I execute the program, now we can see the that variable values in the log window. Now, this is the value that we can see. And what are these values? What are these values? So now I want to show you something. Now I'm going to open that text file. This is the text file. You know, first, first of all, when I read that first record, if I keep my cursor here at the end of the data, first record, now can you see what the column number I'm getting? What is the column number that we have here? 29. 29. 29. So that is the last column of this one. But if I keep my cursor at the starting of the record, or can you see what the column number we have? One. 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 So it is starting from the first column and we have up to 29th. Now, can you please tell me 29 last column minus starting column, 29 minus 1, 29 minus 1 is equal to how much? 28. 28. 28. So that, is, that is the length of the first record. So now that is what we are getting here. Now, if you see the second record, okay, the last column where we have input pointer, where we have the input pointer at the 28th column. Okay. And if I keep my cursor at the starting, what is the starting column that we have? One, isn't it? So now tell me 28 minus one is equal to how much? 27. 27. 27. Now that is the length of my second record. Understand this one? So the the length is we're going to show you that the length is equal to variable will show you the length of each and every input record. So column in just the last input point record on the chips where the input point is standing and the length is going to tell you what the length of each and every record. So the length is nothing but a last column minus the first column. Understand this one? That this is about a length is equal. Now, after this one, now I'm going to write one more in, in file statement option, which is a line is equal to any variable name. Now, I want to create again the same EMP data set from text file. Now I'm writing the program. Now this time I'm writing an option called line is equal to. I'm writing line is equal to. I'm writing a variable called X. X is also an automatic variable. If you want to see this variable value, you can see only in the log window. But if you want to see in the log window, what is the so, option so you should write? I, I have one. Yes. 
I have one doubt. In this uh, column is equal to line is equal to length is equal to. We can specify any name. Any variable name. Any that should variable. be should follow SAS naming rule. Yes, you can have any variable name. Any name. Now this time I am writing line is equal to x. Now we should write the same name in the put statement. Now if I execute this program, yes, we'll get the data set. That is fine. But if I go to the log window, these are the values I can have. Now can you see what are the values that we have in x is equal to? One. We have 23 ones. What are these 23 ones? These ones are nothing but now see if I open this text file. Now how many records is going to be will create one observation. Now here I have 101. 101 will go to which variable? Sorry. 101 will go to which variable? MPID. Usha will go to name. 29 will go to age, female female will go to gender, sex, and 34,000 will go to salary, and HYD will go to location. location. Okay. Now, this one record will become one observation in the data set. So because in my program, I have six variables. In this record, I have six values. These six values will go to six variables. Now, it will create this record is going to become one observation. Now the second record is going to become second observation. Third record will become third observation. That means now can you please tell me how many records or lines are utilized to create one one observation? Okay, okay observation created any lines utilized one line. So one line is becoming one observation. That means that is what line is equal to show you. So one record has been created into one observation. So second observation is also created from one line. Third observation is also created from one record and so on and so on. Now see what I'm going to do. I'm going back to that input text file. Now see what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep 101 Wusha 29 into one variable. Female 34,000 Hyderabad into one line. Now 102 Karen into one line. 33 male into one line. 49,000 Pune into one line. So 102, Ramu one line, 39 one line, male one line, 45,000 Chennai into one line. But can you tell me, if this is my text file, how many lines are utilized to create a first observation? Two. Two lines. Three lines. 101 one will, one one will go to EMPID. Usha will go to name. 29 will go to is now tell me Age. do you have a sex value here no so what it will do now no sir second line why consent or no email is in second line remember, remember i told you because of by default what is the option we are going to have flow well, because of the presence of the floor option, since we do not have here sex value, it, it will jump into the next line to get the value. So it will jump into the next line. What we have in the next line now? Female. So this female mm -hmm. will go to sex. Now 34,000 will go to salary. HVD will go to location. That means location. these two lines is going to become one observation. What about the second observation? How many lines will be utilized to create second observation? Three. Because we have ID, EMPID in one line and age value, sex value in the second line, salary value, location value in the third line. So these three lines is going to become an observation. Now, can you tell me how many lines will be utilized to create a third observation? Six. Six, six lines. Six. six lines. Six. How many lines will we get utilized to create the fourth observation? Two, two lines. Two lines. Two. Two, two lines. From fifth, Nine. from fifth or downwards, sir. Fifth record onwards, one. each line is going to one. One, one, one. one. observation. See, one see I'm this one. yes, I'm executing this program. Now we are going to have an X variable. See, if you go to the top of this one, X variable, now can you see how we have? For the first observation, it utilizes two lines. For the second observation, three lines. For the third observation, how many lines? Six third lines. observation, six lines. Six. For the fourth six observation, six. two lines. Sir. From the fifth observation onwards, so can you see how many lines has been utilized to create one one observation? One line is becoming one one observation, isn't it? 
Understand this one? Yes. So this is how it will become. Okay. So it will give you an idea how many lines it has been utilized for each observation. So to get that one, what is the option we are going to write now? We are going to write an option called line is equal to. Now tell me what are the options that we have seen so far? I will write all the options together now. Okay. Yes, I'm going to get EMP that that is fine. Can you send the first option good to know? And first we have seen an option called end is equal to end is equal to can it any variable name. I'm writing variable name A. Then what we have seen after that one file name is equal to B. So but uh, the B variable length is going to be by default only eight. Since we have a length of only eight, we cannot see the complete path. That's why I'm writing the length statement for which variable B variable. It is a character variable dollar symbol. How much length do you want to have? Say for example, I want to have 200 characters. Then what the third variable, third option we have seen, remember? Column is equal to? Column. I want to know where the, what is the last column of each and every card? I'm writing C. Then we have seen the next option, length is equal to? I'm writing D. It will show you the length of each and every input record. Then what we have seen after that one? We have seen line is equal to? Line is equal to I'm writing E. So now I want to see all the five variable values in the log window. If you want to see that all the variables in the log window, what is the statement you should write? Put statement. Now in the put statement, I'm writing A variable, B variable, C variable, D variable, and E variable. You can write the multiple variables in the put statement. Now all these variable values will print in the log window. Now select the program and execute the program. Now go to the log window. Now in the log window, it will write all the five variables. First, end is equal to 22 zeros and the last one, one. And then file name is equal to, it will write the entire path of each and every record. Then we have seen column is equal to, then we have seen length, and finally what we have seen, we have seen line is equal to. Understand this one? So these are the sum of the automatic variables so that will be get created by in file statement. So all these are automatic variables, so it will remain present in the back end. If you want to see those variables, so where what we should do? We should write that variables in the put statement. Now the put statement is going to print these variables in the log window. We'll discuss about the put statement in detail in future classes. Clear everybody? Yes, sir. Now, I'm going on to my desktop. On my desktop, on my desktop, I have a two text files. Here, I have a sales one text file. In the sales one text file, I have salesperson ID. In January month, how many sales car sales he has done? Feb, March, April, and May month sales. I have four salesperson data here, and I have one more text file which is sales two. In the sales two, I have, say for example, June, July, August, September month sales of the same salespersons. But the I have from January to May into one text file. From June to September, it is in a different text file. Now I want to create a data set. What are the program you will write? I want to create a data set. Now, if you want to create a data set from from this text file, for say, for example, sales one, how we will write the program? Shift, right click, copy as well. Go to the program. Now, data. I want to create a data set called sales. Now semicolon in file. What we should write in the in file statement? We should write the path of the text file. Then what we should do? We should write the input statement. I want to have a salesperson ID SID. Then I want to have a Jan month sale. Then Feb. Then March. Then April. And then May. Now semicolon. Now write the run statement. 
now select the program and execute the program what is the data set i am going to have now sales data set in the sales data set now can you see i have sid sales person id from january to may month we have sales of sales information about the four employees now i want to have june july august and september sales also june july august and september where we have this data we have that data in a different text sales too sales too if i ask you what you will do you will create one more data set but i want to have this data also in the same sales data set in future if you want to do that one if you have a required data in two different data sets we can merge both the data sets but that is a different concept so that we'll see in the future but we have one more method here you know what i'm going to do i want to have that data also in the same data set so then what i'm going to do i'm going back to that sales to text file i'm getting the path of this one shift right click copy as well now go to the program in the same program after the first input statement now again i'm going to add one more in file statement in the in file statement i'm going to specify the path of the text file but what is this text file path this time in any text file the sales to sales to now i am ready to one more input statement for the second in file statement this time i want to have a june then i want to have a july month then i want to have an august month and then i want to have september month now so that means in one program we can write a multiple in file statement understand this one sir we can we can merge to uh, more than three, more than two that we can merge in future that is a different scenario if you have a two data sets say for example i have a data set called ds1 i have one more data set called ds2 what are these both are data sets in future we can merge these two data sets that is a different concept but here i am not merging i am creating one data set from two different in file state in, in two from two different text files understand in future sorry. to merge it merge is a different when we have a two data sets like i have one data set called ds1 i have another data set ds2 then you can merge these two data sets that concept is called as a merge okay but in today's class i am not merging here i am creating one data set from two text files sir we can create uh, three files into one file yes sir. if you want to incorporate if you want to keep one more then what we should do we should have one more in file statement say for example first of all i will execute this program up to this one yes we are going to have a sales data set now, can you see the sales data set what we have we have sales person id jan feb march march april may this is from sales one text file and this information from where sales two text file understand say for example i have one more text file here which is in a sales tree okay in the sales tree text file i have information like this one say for example i have october november and december sales okay like this one this one now i want to add this information to the same data set then again what should i do i'm going to get the path of this text file copy as path now go to the program again what should i do in the same program after this input statement now i'm getting again in file statement the path of the third text file semicolon input this time i want to have you know october and then i want to have november then december now i'm getting october november december now semicolon now if i execute this program yes we are going to have a sales data set Now can you see we have data from Jan to December. That means what you can understand from this one, we can create one data set from multiple in file statements. So one in file statement to that one input statement. Again, second in file statement, second input statement, third in file statement for that third input statement. Understand? We yes. 
sir can we write uh, along with this path can we write in stream data also no okay. you can, you can okay. take any, that one or this one okay okay, okay. Sir, I have one doubt. Yes. Sir, variable yeah, names for now. Already, I have text file. I want to enter some sir program. Already? Hmm. Already variable names. Suppose January February. I have done that. Go on the file. Lo. Okay. But when you're writing a program, you can't. You should. You have to write input statement. In the input statement, you should have variable names. No. That's why. Say for example. Now I'm going to the text file. Okay. Here, I have say for example SID. I have say for example this is Jan, and this is what Feb. This is what March, April, and then May. Already have variable names, but I do not want to read variable names because in the program I am already writing input statement. In the input statement already we have variable names, no? Because when writing a data step like this one, obviously you have to write the input statement. In that scenario, what should I do? I should not read this first line. How we can skip that one? Okay. Now I am writing first OBS is equal to two. And if I can see the data, line two. So now it is going to read only the data. Now see if I execute this program, I am going to get only the data. Generally, if you are text file and variables, we should use the proc import procedure. But since I am using a data step, obviously you have to write input statement. But when I write in the data step, SAS is going to start reading from the first row. But I do not want to have the first row. From where we should read that one? We should read it from the second row. How we can tell that one? We can say first row base is equal to two. Now it will start reading only from the second observation. Uh, sir, what is the other option you said using proc, sir? Proc import. Okay. Proc import. Yes. Clear this one, everybody? Yes, sir. So this is about in file statement. Now, once you have done with the in file statement. I, I don't recommend you should start doing the tasks right now because some of the tasks you may you, you may not you can't do some of the in file statement tasks until unless you have completed the input statement. Okay, no? so once you have completed the input statement also, then you can start doing in file statement input statement tasks. Okay, clear everybody. Now. At the end sure. of the input statement. Now, we'll see one more thing. You know, in a today's class, can you say, I have created EMP data so many times. Whenever I'm creating EMP data set, every time, what I'm doing, I'm getting the path of the text file. Getting the path of the text file every time is going to be a very annoying process. Don't we have any shortcut for this one? Now what we can do, we can create a shortcut for any file in the real time. How to create a shortcut for a file? Say for example, you know, every day I'm in a class, I'm creating So you're not audible. Your voice is not audible. Somebody, uh, your voice is not audible. Now, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I want to. I'm create every day. I'm creating ten to fifteen times. I'm creating a data set from the same text file. When I'm, whenever I'm trying to create a data set, every time what I'm doing, I'm getting the path of this text file. So you should go to the file location folder. You should go to the folder and you should copy the path and you should come again to the program. You should paste there. It is going to be multi-step process, time-taking process. Don't we have a shortcut for this one? Yes, we have a shortcut to copy the part to to refer any file. Say, for example, say what I'm going to do now. I'm going to the SAS. 
now i am writing like this one you should write a statement called file name you know how to create a library yes sir lib name is a different library lib name then what you will write <laughs> library yes. reference library reference name then you will write path of the okay. folder okay. isn't it now in the same way you can also create a file name file name now you can write a, a shortcut for any file then what you should do you should write the path of the folder path sorry path of the text file now i'm taking this text file now i'm going to specify the path here keep a semicolon this is only one statement you should write you should no need to write that run statement as well now i'm going to copy this file name statement now i'm executing this this one line now what is going to happen now it will create a shortcut called demo for which file for this demo one text file understand this one now what is the use of this one now whenever you want to create a data set now you no need to write the complete path here understand you no need to write the complete path simply what you can write now in the in file statement you can write the shortcut demo now see i want to create emp1 now if i execute this program yes i am going to have emp1 data set is going to have the same data now this time i want to create say for example salary data set from the same text file now you no need to write the complete path what simply you can write now you write it simple you can write only demo because instead of writing the complete path what i am writing now i am writing the file shortcut which i created for the same text file now if i execute this program what is the data set i am going to have salary now again while i am creating i want to have say for example stances i want to create a data set called stances now i am writing a data set name stances now i want to create this one from where i want to create i want to create from the same demo text file okay now select the program and execute the program yes we are going to have a stances data set again from the same text file demo one now here also i want to create emp say for example 2 so you don't need the complete path still you can write demo i want to create emp3 execute the program you do not require the put statement execute the program yes i am going to have a demo 3 data set sorry emp3 data set and again now i want to create a salary one now you no need to write the complete path now simply what i can write now yes you can write the demo text file file reference now i want to have say for example salary one now select the program execute the program yes we are going to have a salary one so what you can understand from this one once you create a file shortcut every time you no need to write the complete path what you can do simply you can specify the file shortcut understand this one you can create this file shortcut literally for any type of file say for example see what is the other file i am very regularly i am using i am using say for example here i have an excel folder in the excel folder i have a cars excel sheet this is also i am using every day now shift right click copy as path now i am going to the program now see how to create a file shortcut file name file reference name you can add anything i am writing a file reference reference name srini and then path of the excel sheet now execute this one line now what is the shortcut i created for cars excel sheet now now i want to import this one what is the program for importing proc import then data file is equal to general ga normal ga data file is equal to em rasthundi manu path of the excel sheet but what is the shortcut i am having now Srini. 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 Now this time I want to create a cars two data set. Again, what you can do now simply you can add the proc import data file is equal to same text file, same Excel sheet, Srini. 
then i want to have out is equal to say for example i want to have say for example vehicles vehicles then dbms is equal to, i want to have xls then you can add replace option then what you can do now enter a statement what the decimal we are creating now this time vehicles so from where i am creating same text file which is cars excel sheet but in now you don't need to let everything the path you can add the only the shortcut so this is also like a temporary shortcut only no sir once we exit the shortcut. session only for this session yes okay. this last only for this session okay sir can you see where it placed me then data file name uh, where it placed sir ad ekkada unde ok sachi pichara ekkada place ayindi shortcut file name ha avun sir avun sir screen ekkada create avutundi chudandi inta mundu meeku nenu explorer window ki ellapudu ikkada chudandi em untayi libraries favorite folders this pc file shortcuts untundi chudandi here it will be get created okay the shortcut see for excel sheet we created shortcut demo for a text file understand this one yes sir so this is about the file name statement you can create literally file name statement for any type of file maybe text file excel sheet csv file or pdf file in future or html file for whatever the file you want to you can create a file shortcut by using a file name statement understand this one now this is the end of the in file statement from tomorrow's class onwards we will start discussing about what is the next statement after the in file in file statement type in file statement yes input, input tomorrow's class onwards we are going to discuss about input statement okay okay sir okay sir see you in tomorrow's class anybody has got any doubts anybody any doubts sir yes hello chalo yes sumara umara ni cheppandi sir how how to open the tasks sir tasks window tasks is a text file only no ah yeah, sir how to open it sir so are you trying in server only in mobile sir you are using mobile you are writing program in mobile now in, in listening classes in mobile sir i i use in system sir for, for practicing so where you want to open now to open say for example what you try to open say for example here i have a sas folder and then there i have a task folder which task you try to open <coughs> data statement or in file statement the task folder not Seen in the file, task folder, sir. I had uploaded that into what you call WhatsApp, no? No, sir. Oh no, I uploaded. Everybody, did they upload it? No. I I recently, sir, just one week back, I added the group, sir. Then I will I will send it again. Sir. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay then. Anybody? Any doubts? Which file? You want to have file? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Okay then. I will share this in WhatsApp. Okay. Okay, guys. Then see you in tomorrow's class. Okay, sir. So.